Hello guys and welcome back to Project Monaco. Now I want to start this episode off with a huge thank you to everyone's positive feedback, your views and your comments on the first episode of Project Monaco. It was greatly received and I thank you all for that. But we have a very long way to go in this very challenging series and we're going to start the build off with the main harbour in Monaco which is the Port Hercules. Now this series would not be possible without the number of amazing creators on board. Over 50 at the moment we're sitting at and one of which who helped me massively with this build was Mick Crosshill. You're certainly going to be hearing that name a lot over the next three or four episodes which will be the number of episodes I reckon it will be to complete the whole of this harbour. So not only will you hear a lot of his name mentioned in this episode but you'll be seeing a lot of work on the workshop from him. Lots of boats, lots of assets and we'll be revealing which ones are released each week via the series. But without further ado let's jump into the time lapse and the first job of the harbour is to pretty much lay the harbour out. So as you can see here I started off with a um, just a small road just around it. This is also going to be a key factor a bit later on as well which you'll see. But for now we're using this to help us align the custom keys, which you'll also be able to see now on the workshop released by the man himself, Mick Crosshill. So now what you can see I'm doing is just minimising the height, just to get the right amount of uh, water level around these keys, just so we can see enough of it. I didn't want to do a massive deep um, harbour because one, it's unrealistic and two, it doesn't tend to look as nice so we're just trying to go for the minimal here just so we can get the harbour looking nice and realistic. Now you also see now and again I pop up the overlay. So the overlay I'm going to follow as best I can obviously with the mechanics of the game it's not going to be possible to replicate Monaco to the inch but the um, overlay itself is the one that was created by Mr Miyagi which helped him create the map as well so it's the perfect one to use. And it's just good to help to see where these um, harbours sort of come about and placing down the roads which is going to be key to really getting the, uh, the land exactly how we want it. But as you can see here we are placing one of the first custom builds which I received from Mick Crosshill and this is the Monaco Harbour Pier. And my word is this pier a fantastic replication of what you see in real life. The pier itself can certainly be reused in other builds which is why it's been released on the workshop so go and check that out if you wanted to use it. You'll see I do end up having to use a few techniques to get this down correctly. Um, what I was hoping to do here was because I'm using the rose I did want to have some sort of a vehicle um, entrance and exit just to make it a bit more realistic. I don't want to have heavy traffic on these but the possibility to open this up if I feel I need to for cinematic use means that we'll at least get some traffic on the bridge itself. Now this pier itself is actually a passenger pier from what I recall um, so there would be transportation taking people to and from this area. The actual loading area is a bit further down the pier of course so there's obviously not going to be much traffic going on in this area but I still wanted to have some sort of a, a road system here just for you know use a bit later on. So this was the trickiest part of placing down the actual uh, pier itself, just for getting the roads under enough so that it's hidden within the actual building itself. But once it's done it really does look good and you can see the roads underneath the actual pier itself so that does look really good. So up next we're using these custom uh, piers by Mick Cross Hill as well. So these are what we're using to add to the width itself of the pier. So you can imagine the original pier that we looked at earlier is the main construction of the actual pier. And this is like the big concrete slab that it sits upon. Um, so combining these together you get the look of the actual pier in real life. And don't be deceived, we've still got a terraform around this before it looks exactly like what you see in real life. So hang in there, we're getting there slowly. And on the topic of piers, there's not that many interesting piers on the workshop. So I'm hoping that you guys will be able to use this to recreate much nicer piers and harbours um, rather than using the standard keys. Um, which, you know, people can make look very good. But this pier particularly, you obviously have a lot going on here as well. The shape itself is extremely unique 
and you've got the little tower at the end as well which is a, a very nice feature so hopefully everyone can enjoy and make something special out of this asset so whilst we just finish off these last bits of this pier and do the terraforming i'll be very intrigued to hear what you guys are interested in seeing me build in this series obviously we heard from mr miyagi last time but he's very interested in seeing a lot of different aspects of monaco in particular the buildings at the top of the hill so let me know what you're interested in seeing is there a certain part of monaco that perhaps you've seen or perhaps you've seen on google maps and would really can't wait to see how i recreate that obviously there's gonna be a lot of areas that can be very difficult to build certainly with the terrain but i'm very confident we'll be able to get something looking at least a resemblance of that but going back to the time lapse as you can see now we have terraformed around and things are looking a lot better. There's a few areas, as you can see here from the road, that I needed to move in because uh, the mechanics of the game meant that we couldn't actually remove that terraforming area. So we have little bits like that to struggle with, certainly with this project in hand. And the first problem we had to tackle, well not a problem, but something that needed solving was this area here. We couldn't quite get the two, um, well the key and the uh, pier to connect very well so in the end we had to use something and perfectly I believe at the time of recording this video the uh, the harbour uh, concrete blocks from Ronix were released and this fits in perfectly for this so that was a good timing in terms of finding something to work a solution. Now on a separate note obviously I want to ensure that this series is as watchable as possible and I know the difficult thing is for any City Skylines video is how to incorporate the time lapse obviously without a time lapse one nothing really will get built um, and two if you have it all time lapse it's extremely boring so the format of this video is going to be a little bit different to my previous sort of let's plays so i'm going to try my best to cut out all the mundane bits on the time lapses so all you see is the bits that i want you to see in terms of actually activity not time of me scrolling through assets and sort of thinking moments which um happens quite a lot for myself um, so we're we'll looking to do that and I want to have a few sort of live play sections whether that's me building live play or us looking around what we have just created so we can see things um, in a different angle up close and personal and just in a more easier time to view I know there's a lot of people that suggest that time lapses are sometimes sometimes a little bit too quick which does then ruin the fact of all the effort you put in to create something, especially if someone wants to recreate it um, themselves as well. So let me know your thoughts on the best format that you would like to see for a City Skylines video. This one will, like I say, be a, tight, a slightly different one to, to my normal um, previous series. So let me know what you think of that. But anyway, getting back into the build, we are laying down some concrete. Um, and we put down some lorries so this area here there's not really much in terms of commercial or industrial it's pretty much just a harbour um, not too much going on but as you can see here uh, the first challenge was to create this area here this building itself as you can see from the top left hand corner is a very strange one it's kind of almost like porter cabins packed on top of each other and whilst there isn't anything exact this on the workshop is beautiful and pretty much a very close and Pretty close match for what I'm trying to replicate here um, obviously it doesn't look realistic in the sense of there's doors um, on the second tier um, but it's as good as we've got for the time being and using the move it tool we raise them up on top of each other and create the sort of horseshoe shape that we see in uh, in the recent video so next job is to detail and obviously detail in this area to the best of our ability to create what we see in real life. I guess the only issue that I have noticed in this harbour area is the um, footage that I found both on YouTube and using Google Maps seems to be when the Formula One was here so a lot of the, um, the clips and the areas are when the whole of Monaco transformed ready for the Monaco Grand Prix so that means that this harbour area is a lot different in terms of what you would normally see so I've tried to combine a bit of both in this uh, in this area so we've had some bits left in like for example these porter cabins are normally here for when the Formula One is here but it's such a unique 
different sort of look to making this harbour something else. I thought I'd leave it in there. Um, otherwise, the harbour is quite bare. There's not really much going on outside of the um, these busy seasons. Um, so yeah, trying to create a bit of both here, just to fill this area out to make it a little bit more interesting. And I mean, what I love doing in these builds is, especially with detail, is creating a sort of atmosphere, creating a scene, I guess. So making something um, tell a story. So even though we are imitating Monaco here, I still want to have a storytelling look about this area. So people who don't know Monaco can look at it and sort of really take some inspiration from it as well. So what we're doing now is using some of the Beard Monkeys um, platforms to just fill in some of these gaps here, make a bit of concrete area. I mean, in particular, these, um, these stacked porter cabins didn't quite level up perfectly because of the terrain itself. So putting down the concrete just made things level out a little bit better. And in the porter cabins and a bit of detail in this section as well, just to bring it back to life. Now going back to my earlier point about this being the time when the Formula One's here, there's a lot of gated off areas during this period of time. So we're gonna try and keep that replication going here um, just to make things look a little bit different. You'll also notice on the right hand side you keep seeing a few assets just plop down the corner and this is a way that I like to work. I like to pick out from the workshop and my collection a few assets I'm going to lay down here and use Move It to sort of place it in a later time. The reason for that is one, it saves a lot of time and also you get inspiration when you just flick through now and again through your, uh, your <laughs> massive asset list if you're like myself. Um, so it is a good idea and also you find things that you've forgotten about that um, then spring your mind into play and you think about adding something else as well. And what we're doing here is we're adding down Ronix 6 docks. One, because I think the uh, colour looks a lot better and also because you can plop um, decals on top of it as well. So we can add a bit more detail on it. Unfortunately, the um, model itself by Mick, we can't do so because it's a building. But this joins the two together perfectly. So we're able to also detail a bit better in this area.
Now our next job, now things are looking a little bit more detailed, is to place down this gated off area. So this gated area is pretty much where some of the yachts are housed. Um, whether they're being put into storage or in repair, I'm not too sure exactly what this area is meant to be for, but it's a lovely little gated community area here where we're just gonna plop down some of the yachts and a little fueling station as well. So there are already a couple of boat storage um, items on the workshop. This item here has already been released by Mick Crosswell a little while back, so this is a perfect addition for that. And we're gonna find a few boats here that we can just plop down as well. Um, so not only has Mick been creating floatable boats, but there's also a lot of sort of freestanding boats as well, and a few others as well, which we'll, we'll put down here. These ones in particular are actually floating boats which we're able to put down on the terrain itself so that makes things a little bit easier it means we can add a bit more variation in this area doesn't look as realistic as perhaps ones on stands but there'll be a surprise a bit later on regarding that uh, which we'll uh, be releasing on the workshop as well some very nice standing boats but they won't be yet they'll probably be in episode three now not only have we got the boat area, there's a lot of cars as well parked around the harbour which was again why I wanted to have the roads around here as well because potentially we could have some cars driving around but thinking about it I don't think there'll be many cars moving around and the mechanics of how city skylines worked with traffic probably will make things look a bit unrealistic so instead I decided to prop down some uh, ploppable vehicles around here just parked up um, just to make things a little bit more uh, realistic and again I will probably use a trick that I have recently learnt um, off Sheik who um, is a live streamer of City Skylines so if you haven't seen him yet check out him on uh, Twitch but he has been using the invisible paths um, which are a great addition and what we need to do with that is pretty much just place some invisible paths um, over the roads etc just so then people will walk around and we'll probably put a few of the um, park generators as well to influence a bit of traffic around here but this area as I said is not going to be as densely populated with people walking around it's going to be the rest of the harbour where people will tend to go around this is pretty much purely for the passengers going onto the uh, ships and people who own the yachts and uh, sort of docked up etc but we can work on that and see how things look a little bit later on so the final stages of this particular section is pretty much just putting down some decals. So just making things look a bit more rougher and we created this little pathway as well along this section, um, which is a main pathway for people to walk. But definitely adding down these decals really do work. And you'll see, which I did do off camera, is add those um, little um, shipping irons, whatever you want to class them as, which is what the uh, ships dock up to and put the rope around to keep them nice and sturdy against the keys themselves so that also adds a lot to the build makes things look a little bit more realistic and uh, workable in terms of what the actual environment's meant to be so that's pretty much finishing off this section and uh, definitely it's come alive a lot more now we've got some detail down it did look a little bit bare uh, which was always gonna be my worry at first for this section it's not a very detailed section in terms of what's going on but I certainly feel this now has a breath of life. So let's jump into a little live play here and have a look at what we have just created. So here we go. Things are certainly looking a lot more lively. Oh, I love that pier, look at that. The, the, the view of that looks so realistic. And as you can see here, popping up on the left-hand corner, we have what we see in real life off the pier. And my word, does that look exactly the same? The model itself for Mick Crosswell, the pier is fantastic. Obviously, we're not perfect in terms of the shape itself, but I'm sure you can agree that that resembles things extremely well. And like I keep on saying, we're not gonna be able to create things 100% the same as what we see in real life. It's gonna be extremely impossible, but I'm hoping that this resembles enough of the port itself. So zooming in a little bit more up front here, we can see the detail that was put in here. We've got the lorries in the corner, a little kiosk there, which is obviously only there really when the Monaco Grand Prix is here. But in general, I'm very pleased with how this has turned out. There's still a lot of space and like I say, there is a lot of space anyway on this harbour. Not a lot is going on really on a day-to-day -day basis. 
Um, but yeah, very pleased with how this has come about. And I'm guessing what we need to do now is add some boats. And the boats are obviously key to this harbour. There are absolutely hundreds in this area. And just using Move It really here to create a bit of um, variation in these boats. Um, as you can see here, I've plopped down all of them. And there are a lot of new boats available by Mick Cross Hill. And yes, the majority of them now are on the workshop. So if you want to create your own harbour or add to what you've already created, there are a lot more boats around and a lot of very sexy large yachts as well. Especially the Jameson, go and check that one out. That one is a beauty. So in terms of placement of these ships, I have pretty much copied what I saw on Google because I do assume there is some sort of um, policy when parking up your, your boats. It does seem there's sections where the large yachts and boats are versus um, where the smaller ones are as well. So without knowing the details of it, I just thought I'd just copy as best I can from what I saw on Google. And also released from Micross Hill is the small piers and these are perfect for creating the little piers in between the boats. Um, you'll see these used a lot as I place down the rest of these boats. And well, they are very unique. There are some on the workshop which I believe are wooden, but these are obviously concrete and they are beautiful. Very good and I'm sure a lot of you can take full advantage of those as well. So we're gonna jump into a short time lapse just whilst I complete the boat area. And then we'll have a quick review of what we've done today, followed by some absolutely beautiful cinematics. So by all means, do not miss those. We'll catch up shortly. And here it is, the completion of this first part of the port. So we'll start off here. We've got the beautiful um, pier created by Mick Cross Hill, a combination of that combined with the uh, piers as well, which Mick has also created for us. A boat on the right-hand side, which will represent the ferry 
and as we now come into the main complex where the lorries are stored and you can obviously drive in, in and out of the uh, pier itself so this is the area where a lot of people will be walking across getting ready for their ship out of here and looking at this angle and this uh, sort of height really does show the complexity of what's been put into this build here we've got some beautiful flowers on the left hand side we've got these cabins here and in the distance here now we can see the uh, ship storage location but just adding these ships and yachts in, you can really see how much of a difference it makes. It really does make the uh, the bill pop and it actually feels more like a harbour now. Uh, I mean, we've only placed about a third of the overall um, ships and yachts that sit in this harbour. But things are going to slowly take shape over the next couple of episodes. And I did add a few more um, of the... Um, portable cabins on the left hand side as well and just tidy things up with a few extra props just to make things look a little bit better and there are a lot of palm trees in Monaco so I started to add a few of these on the outskirts but here you can see all the extra boats that we added and all these piers and those piers really do look absolutely amazing and that pretty much now brings us to the end of episode 2 of Project Monaco and we're going to work next week on the next stage of this harbour so we're going to start adding down the first of many custom buildings and we're going to be working in this little area here so stick around make sure you check out episode three which will be released in the next couple of weeks and of course let me know your thoughts on this particular episode and the series in general comments will be much appreciated below if you enjoyed the video hit that like button and of course subscribe if you want to see more other than that guys, thank you very much for your time and I'll leave you with these cinematics and I'll catch you next time for another episode of Project Monaco. All the best.